Hello there. Today we are here to talk about an upcoming book study called The Fundamentals of Literacy Instruction and Assessment Pre-K through 6. This is the second edition of the book. It was written by Dr. Marty Haugen and Dr. Susan Smart. Both of these young ladies are accomplished educators. Dr. Martha uh, Haugen has written another book called Fundamentals of Literacy Assessment and Instruction for Grades 6 through 12, so you might want to check that out. And Dr. Susan Smart is the co-author with Dr. Deb Glazer of another book called Next Steps in Literacy Instruction. Both of these books are excellent. But we're here today to talk about this book. This is an upcoming 10-week book study that I can't wait to tell you about. And doctor, I have some help from Dr. Smart and Dr. Haugen. Thank you, Donna, for all that you're doing as well. We are concerned because there is a national literacy crisis. You all know that. You share that concern with us. Uh, the literacy skills of our students are getting stagnant or declining and certainly not improving. Only 35% of our students are at or proficient in reading. Many teacher preparation programs do not teach the critical knowledge that teachers need, which is the science of reading. And there's a growing divergence as we're increasingly aware of each day between, of the achievement between the lowest performing students and the highest performing students. And we know that all but a very few children, maybe perhaps only 2%, can be taught to read competently. So these are our concerns. These are the reasons that Marty and I revised the book because of these concerns that you all share with us. We know that knowledgeable and skilled teachers make a difference. And recently, out of the cognitive science research and literature, um, we have confirming data, confirming evidence about how kids learn to read. And Stephanie Stoller has done a great job in developing a three-minute elevator speech. Um, if you want to summarize what the science of reading really means, and these are her five key takeaway points as we distill the term science of reading. We have learned that reading isn't natural. While brains are wired to learn to talk in kids, reading is not a natural process. Everyone learns to read the same way. The same pathways in the brain are used for all readers. We know the pathways to reading. We have the same process to learn to read, all of us do, but we know that some kids acquire these skills more easily than others. And we also know that all students benefit from systematic explicit instruction in those skills that form those pathways. So we today have more precise, proven, systematic strategies for teaching all students to read. So what Susan and I wanted to do with this text is to take those principles of the science of reading and translate them into how you can actually implement them in your classrooms going from research to practice. And there are several things we feature in this text that help with this. One is structured literacy. That's the method of directly teaching the basics of reading, especially the novice reading readers, especially K through three, where it's so essential that they get these skills. Another big feature of our text interwoven throughout it are the features of effective instruction. And I'm just going to say what those are very quickly so you could see how they are aligned with the science that Susan just summarized. So first we know that students need explicit instruction with modeling and then they need systematic instruction with scaffolding. Our students need many, many, many practice opportunities, particularly struggling readers. And I'm talking about hundreds or thousands of opportunities to practice these skills before they'll learn them to automaticity. So that's the third feature is practice. The fourth is feedback, how to give affirmative and corrective feedback to our young readers to ensure that they are practicing correctly. 
And then finally, it's progress monitoring, which I'm sure you've all heard about that. And there's formal and informal ways of determining are our students making progress? And if not, how do those data inform our instruction and how we change the instruction to meet their needs? So you'll see these features interwoven throughout the text, as well of, of course, the important components of literacy instruction that you all know by heart phonemic awareness, phonics, fluency, vocabulary, comprehension. And what we've done is we've also included English language learners who learn the same way as English speakers do. And then a couple of chapters on early childhood to make sure the kids are getting what they need before they even start formal schooling. So all of this is to translate the research into practice. And we do this by giving you scripts and sample lessons and a lot of other tools online as well as in the book to help you actually take what you know about the research and teach it the next day. And uh, we just wanted you to note, this text focuses on tiers one and two. We're trying to prevent reading difficulties. It does not focus on those children who are struggling uh, immensely and maybe in special ed or in tier three. However, Many teachers have found it helpful to have this background knowledge so they can design appropriate instruction for their more needy kids. And we're very pleased to have nationally renowned experts. And these are just a few of them. The book has 19 chapters, many have multiple authors. But these are people you've probably heard about, you know, Carol Tolman of Letters Fame and Jan, Jan Hasbrook of Fluency, Stephanie Alotaba and her colleagues with Phonological Awareness. Stephanie Soler will be presenting to you about assessment during this book study and Suzanne Carricker, who is going to do the beginning reading writing, spelling, and composition, and we have others. So these are all people who will be presenting during the book study. Finally, we wanted to let you know the overall design and the conceptual strands in each chapter. And again, be thinking research to practice. So I'm just going to point out a couple of them. One is we start each chapter with a scenario. I didn't tell the story about being fired from my first job, but we do tell real stories from teachers and how they are struggling, particularly how do I arrange my instruction to meet the needs of all students? What do I do? So the scenarios have been found helpful. We also have effective instructional activities and strategies incorporated in each chapter. And these follow the features of effective instruction I discussed earlier. You'll see all the other things that we do address in every chapter. I do want to mention the reflection and planning. This is how do I get all of these concepts and important instruction into my reading time or into my school day? How do I organize it? And then reflecting on what is working and what isn't and what to do differently. So those are just some of the things. I do want to note the online resources, which are immense, and you'll have the opportunity to download lesson plans and um, the professors can download syllabi. So we have a lot of information. We're always looking for more and we hope to keep it updated. Plus, I'll add to what Marty just said, lots of um, resources to help you with your virtual learning. We know that you're all struggling right now to translate what you have been doing face-to-face -face with kids to your online um, experiences now. So here, just a, a snapshot of some of the things that are in the book. We certainly talk about the simple view of reading, how the Scarborough's reading rope, sound walls. We talk about articulatory features and gestures and how some kids need to see and feel and hear how sounds are made in order to make the connection between sounds and letters. We talk about orthographic mapping and the difference between sight words and high frequency words and how all kids store words in the same way. We use a lot of Anita Archer's explicit instruction throughout the book 
and we model and teach you, give you scripts to for how I do, we do, and you do as we um, tra transfer the instruction over to kids. We have an assessment in every chapter. What should kids be able to do? How do you progress monitor? How do you plan instruction based on your assessment data? As Marty talks about features of effective instruction throughout structured literacy. And then the great chapter we, that is chapter 19, which is how do we put all this stuff together and do it in a real classroom with our kids. So we also want to offer for you continuing ed credits, continuing ed hours, and there'll be at least two ways to get those. One will be where you pay a fee and you get your transcript of your hours that you can use to help with your ongoing professional development. The other option will just be a free option to you where we will give you a certificate that shows your numbers of hours in attendance. So there'll be more information coming um, from Donna to help you know uh, how to access continuing ed hours if you want those. And this is just essentially uh, a synopsis. It's a book study. This is online at Donna's site. So you can see when we're starting, what we're going to have um, 10 sessions on Tuesday nights, starting at seven o'clock central time. There's a, a small fee to support Donna's efforts. If you sign up before I purchase the book before October 1st, you get a 30% discount. So Donna has all of that on the website. You can go there to access what you need to get started. And I think finally, here is what we view. We've taken this quote from Dr. Pam Kastner, and we believe that every teacher deserves to know the science of reading and that every child deserves a teacher who knows it. So that is the motivation behind our book. We hope that you'll find it helpful. Susan left off the most important motivation to us is that is to make sure that our little grandchildren have wonderful teachers who are efficacious and ensure that they learn to read. Thanks everybody. I think we're, Donna? Yeah, okay. So I just wanted to say that um, we've had lots of success with our previous book study. We did the Equip for Reading Success book study. And it's a wonderful way to read a book because you're being supported along the way. Um, book studies are a way for collaborative professional development. We build a sense of community and we learn from one another. There's weekly guidance from an expert and it makes online um, book study a practical and economical resource for continued learning. I'd like you to consider joining us beginning in September for this book study. And um, don't delay, enroll today to ensure that you will have your textbook in time for the September 15th start.